In this video, I'm going to talk about the first step in setting up an application with the Web Audio API. That first step is creating an audio context. In a previous video, I examined the audio context constructor function in the Chrome DevTools console, but here we'll start setting it up in a code editor. Now for my editor, I'm using Visual Studio Code, but of course you can use whatever you like to work with. So I've created two files. I've created an index.html file, and I've also created an app.js file. This app.js file is where we'll write our JavaScript code. The index.html file is just a simple file with a script tag, line 9 here, and you can see that its source is set to that app.js file. And that app.js file lives in the same directory as the index.html file. So let's come over to app.js, and here we'll start by creating a variable, which we'll call ctx for context, and we'll assign it to the result of invoking the audio context function constructor with the new keyword like so. Now let's console log the ctx variable so we can take a look at it in Chrome's console. So here in Chrome's console we can see an instance of the audio context object that we just created with all of its various properties and methods. Now one question I have is where does this audio context constructor function live or come from in the first place? Well, if we take a look at the window object, we can see that audio context is a method that lives on the window object. The window object, by the way, is what the browser considers to be the global object. So if we come back into our code, we can try prepending that audio context with window dot to give us window dot audio context. And we can see if it still works. Now, as you might have guessed, we get the same result in the console as before. And one thing that we've done here is we've made our code a bit more explicit, but using window.audioContext as opposed to simply audio context is going to have more relevance for us in just a minute. For now though, let's try something. Let's go and take a look at this exact same code in another browser. Let's take a look at the same code in Safari. So here in Safari, we're actually getting an error telling us that undefined is not a constructor. And the reason for this is that Safari, as of now, doesn't recognize window.audioContext. And so we need to do something special to accommodate for this cross-browser compatibility issue. In order to make audio context work for Safari, we need to use window.webkitAudioContext. Since ultimately we don't know which browser the user will be using, we're going to alter our code like so. We're going to say var ctx, like before, but now we're going to say equals new, and then in parentheses, we'll have window.audioContext or window.webkitAudioContext. And finally, we'll add on double parentheses at the end to invoke the function. Now these double pipes here are known as the logical OR operator, and the statement is essentially saying, is there an audio context method on the window object, or is there a WebKit audio context method on the window object? Whichever one there is, use that one. Now we wrap both options as a whole in parentheses because whichever method ends up being available, we want to invoke that method with the new keyword. So now that we made this change, we can come back to both Safari and Chrome. Here's Chrome on the left, and here's Safari on the right, and we can see that the errors are gone now, and a new audio context instance has been created for us in both browsers. Now there's a good way to find out what's supported in the different browsers, and that's to go to caniuse.com and search for the particular method that you're looking for. So in this case, we're looking for audio context. And here we see support for audio context in Edge and Firefox and Chrome and Safari, Opera, and so on. And if we hover over Safari, it tells us that audio context is supported in Safari, but with the prefix WebKit. 
Now back to when we prepended both audio context and WebKit audio context with the window object. Let's see what would happen if we had just written audio context and WebKit audio context instead of window.audio context and window.webkit audio context. And let's pull open both browsers here again with Chrome on the left, Safari on the right. And in this case, instead of giving us undefined, Safari throws a reference error saying that it can't find variable audio context. And this prevents the rest of the expression here from being evaluated. Now in the next video, we'll get started generating some sounds with our new audio context.